In this video, I'm going to give you my top five tips for how to do the slip in boxing. The slip is primarily a defensive action we use to move our head off the center line, hereby represented by some hand wraps hanging from my set of rings. My head now is on the center line, which means that you can hit me. If I move my head off that center line here and here, then there's less chance of you hitting me. That's the prime directive of the slip, to avoid a punch. Remember, we're trying to hit and not be hit. The second purpose of the slip, I'll cover in the bonus tip at the end of this video. So how do we do the slip? Well, we get ourselves into position and we move our head off the center line like this. But it's not as easy as you might think. There are many people who will simply bend from the waist like this. This doesn't load the legs and doesn't give me any power in my counter punches that I'm going to come back with. So we've got to get ourselves set up correctly. So let's look at the biomechanics, not the hocus pocus of the slip. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to get our feet in the right place. Have a look at this. This is where my feet need to be. This is the stance box on our footwork training system. And you'll see that it looks like tiles here. Now, in order to get our feet in the correct position, we need to have both of our feet angled at 45 degrees. So, in order to do that, if you have some tiles on your floor in your kitchen, you can do this. Point the toe here at this corner and the heel at this corner and do exactly the same with the other feet. That's where you need your feet. Now there are some coaches that will argue that the back foot can be more flat and the front foot more sideways. But the next biomechanical point I'm going to show to you explains why that isn't the case. Both feet should be pointing in the same direction. For this reason, the slip is done by bending at the knees like this. There's the next tip. Bend at the knees to do the slip faster and more effectively. Why is this so important? It's simple biomechanics. The human body is made up like this. Rotation joint, hinge joint, rotation joint. Same on the legs. Rotation, hinge, rotation. Now the movement is going to come by and large from the knees on this movement. So what happens is, because my knees are a hinge joint, they don't want to rotate. They, they can rotate a little bit, maybe five degrees at the most, but they don't like to. So if my knees are both pointing in the same direction, they can work together. If one of them is pointing this way and the other one this way, I can then only move from the waist because my knees cannot work together. This is counterproductive. The third tip, and this is really, really important. How far do I go with the slip? Well, here's a dead simple tip that you can use. To know that your shoulder, the shoulders are the third tip, to know that your shoulder has done enough work moving sideways, this shoulder should come over this foot, like this, there. Now, I can either keep this hand high here, which I like to do, or if you're wide built, you can use a cross arm defense like this, there, there, but the shoulder comes over this foot. This means this leg is loaded and ready to fire the counter punch. When I go over to the other side there, this shoulder needs to go over to this foot here, and that means I've gone far enough. The fourth tip is to use a second line of defense. This is just common sense when it comes to boxing. Yes, some people will slip like this and they'll have their hands down. Look at Nazim Hamed for someone who could do this brilliantly, but not everybody has his reflexes and his ability. So a second line of defense is astute. Like I said, one hand here, like this, or the cross arm defense, if you prefer, whichever, as long as you employ a second line of defense. Tip number five. A lot of coaches will say to do this, but I don't like it. Don't slip inside of the punch. In professional boxing, we work to a safe side, and I always like to slip outside of the punch. So if you threw your jab at me, I would slip outside of this because now I'm safe away from this hand, okay? I'm away from the cross. If you jab in at me this way and your cross is here, as I slip this way, I move onto the cross. 
Some coaches like it, I don't. It's too high a risk strategy, so I wouldn't do that. That's my tip number five. If you stuck with me this long, the bonus tip is knowing what to do once you've slipped. Once you have slipped, the weight has been transferred over to the other side. You can then use a counter punch on your opponent. One of my favorite ones to do, and I'll show you this is one of my favorites, is if we've, if we've slipped over outside of the cross there, the weight is on this leg here, and that lends itself perfectly to the liver shot, which it's a fantastic counter punch. On the other side, I like to wait for the jab coming. Once I see the jab coming, I'll use that second line of defense, keep my eyes open, and I'll attack the body on this side and then this side. So I'll switch and I'll go both sides. I like going twice to the body if I'm going to. So thank you for sticking with me, and those are my top tips for doing a great slip.